This is Samsuk, and in this video we are looking at royal authority under Edward VI, and in particular Edward Seymour and the Duke of Northumberland. So first of all we look at the accession of the young king, as Edward VI became king at the age of nine, and he succeeded the titles of supreme head of the church and defender of the faith. However, this accession of a nine-year-old king did create many problems, especially due to the difficult inheritance. And the inheritance was difficult because of the situation of the country. Now, firstly, it was divided on religious matters. Crown finances were especially poor. After wars against both France and Scotland, the coinage had been debased, which led to things such as inflation um, and a decrease in wages and the crown had compromised its own security by selling off monastic lands. Now, as we learned about in last um, video, in Henry VIII's will, he had set a, a regency council to govern during Edward's minority, and his minority was when he was young, and this consisted of 16 members, supported by a further 12, who were keen to help when required. Now, the members were a mix between Protestants and religious conservatives, and the decisions were to be made by a majority. But the first person we need to know about is Edward Seymour, also known as the Duke of Somerset. Now, Edward Seymour was Jane Seymour's brother and the uncle of Edward VI. And after Edward's birth, he was made Lord High Admiral and Lieutenant General of the North. Now, although a regency council was set up in the role of Henry VIII, the power was soon transferred to Edward Seymour, who was at the time the Earl of Hertford. Now, Seymour was able to get in this strong position with the help of many renowned individuals, such as Thomas Cranmer, Viscount Lysel, who is also later the Earl of Warwick and the Duke of Northumberland, who we'll be learning about later, and Sir William Paget, who is an administrator to Henry VIII, who had become one of the two main secretaries. Now, he reinforced his power by appointing Sir Michael Stanhope as chief gentleman in the Privy Chamber. And in March 1957, he secured a letters patent from Edward VI, which granted him an almost monarchical right. Now, from this moment, he started to rule by proclamation, and this meant he was essentially making the decisions himself. However, many of the Privy Ch Chamber members started to resent the, pr the protectorate, um, and within just a few weeks, Thomas Reevesley, who was the Earl of Southampton, had been arrested. Now, the other main victim was Somerset's brother, Thomas Seymour, as he had attempted to turn Edward VI against the Duke of Somerset, and had even plotted with the Earl of Southampton to overthrow him. Now, for this reason, Thomas Seymour was charged with treason, and this charge was corroborated by the Earl of Southampton, who was able to be readmitted into the council. Now, it was Somerset's foreign policy, however, that was the main reason for his downfall. And after initial successes under Henry VIII, and then the crushing victory against Scotland at Pinky Clue in September 1547, Somerset's aim started to become unrealistic, and his armies were a massive financial burden on the crown. And we will learn a lot more about his foreign policy in, in future videos. And the rebellions of 1549 were evidence of the failures of the government at this time, and they were badly mishandled by Somerset. Now, this gave the Earl of Warwick, later the Northumberland, the opportunity to strike. Now, in August 1549, Warwick, Southampton, the Earl of Arundel, and Lord St. John decided that the rule of Somerset had to be put to an end. And by October, the conspirators struck, and once Somerset had been promised that no treason charges would be passed, he surrendered. So this leads on to the, the second part of Edward VI's reign, and this was under John Dudley, who was known as the Duke of Northumberland. And by many historians, Dudley has been seen as the bad duke due to his ruthlessness and failed attempt to alter the succession. Now, after Somerset had been overthrown, Dudley was seen as the first choice to take over from Somerset. And as he didn't want such a concentration of power within the Somerset reign, he decided not to establish the protectorate. Now, instead, he gave himself the title Lord President of the Council. Now, whilst many of his supporters in the coup had been conservatives, Dudley decided to remove these supporters like Southampton and Arundel. Now, this, along with the king's beliefs and Thomas Cranmer, led to a largely Protestant regime. 
Now after this, Dudley was promoted to the Duke of Northumberland, where he appointed Sir John Gates as Vice Chancellor of the Household to ensure his control. Now initially, Northumberland was able to operate an effective government through the Privy Council with the help of Sir William Paget. Now Paget was soon excluded from decision-making processes and was replaced by William Cecil. Now although Northumberland had created a collective government, this was shattered after an attempted counter-coup from Somerset. And Somerset had been readmitted into the council, but he had wanted to regain his old position. Now even so, Northumberland was a step ahead and he executed Somerset for his actions. Now after this, Northumberland started to rule more individually than before and presumed enemies such as Paget, who had been prominent under Somerset, were removed to the tower and Northumberland soon has access to the dry stamp so that he could legitimise documents. He ended and he was eventually executed for treason after the failure of his plot to place Lady Jane Grey on the throne. So that is the two main people in Edward VI reign who helped him reign, seeing as he was still in his minority. Um, as we go through the series of um, Edward VI, we will learn a lot more about these two and their uh, policies in foreign policy and economic policies. So thank you and see you soon. Bye.